Hey everyone, welcome back. Dave here, yet another time for a Social Blade video cast. Joined by Jenna as well. Hey guys. Yet again. <laughs> I just caught myself. Yet you have again. To, you have to stop saying I that. I know, I know. Anyway, so we're going to be going over a bunch of different things here, but we're focused mostly on audio production, how to get the best audio out of your setup for producing YouTube videos. And I know you guys really love producing YouTube videos, but audio is extremely important. Really important, wouldn't you say? Well, but, I mean, should we be talking about this after what happened last week? No. <laughs> so, for those of you that didn't join us last week, we actually had some audio issues um, with the live stream, uh, mostly due to the fact that we have one guy running all the production. That's all the switching, sending it out to the live stream, all that stuff. It's the job of four or five people, and... Um, he, the mo the audio we were monitoring, our in-house audio sounded great. But for some reason, when it went to YouTube, didn't sound so great. Yeah. Extremely so. important. Hey, I hear really myself. Important, you well, that was awesome, Jay. That's <laughs> Thank you. Our, our Thank producer, you. yet again, <laughs> making our headphones do something we don't want. <laughs> but, you know, you know, that's just, it's the nature of YouTube, especially the nature of live shows. Things go wrong, and you just got to laugh and roll with it. Yeah. Like so, we just did. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we've gotten a lot of questions about audio, not just about the super fancy, overly complicated. Um, $2,000 worth of equipment. It's, we're probably running about $2,000 set up here for this, but you can do it on a budget as well. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go over some thir first things. Uh, let's start on, because we have a lot of gamers that watch the show. Let's yes. go over microphones that people would want to look for to place on their desk right next to their keyboard when they're doing a, a game publishing uh, style video. Okay. And well, uh, what's what's the number one microphone that seems to come up a lot? I, you know, I, as you all know, I do, I run the consulting on you on Social Blade. And so I work with a lot of different YouTubers every week. And the microphone name that comes up the most often for me is Blue Yeti. I, okay. Let me give you my thoughts on the Blue Yeti. It is a good microphone. I'll give them that. I've tested both of them that Blue sent me for reviews on one of my channels, and I, I thought they were good microphones. However, the issue with them is that when you place them in a louder environment, such as next to a gaming keyboard, which tends to click, and your mouse, and you're just doing a lot of action and making noise, you're definitely going to hear that audio in the mix. So it's a very sensitive microphone. It's the classification of microphone called condenser microphone. Now, what we're using here on set is actually a different style of microphone. It's a dynamic microphone, and these are not as sensitive. If I step a few feet back here, you notice the audio. It, it dramatically drops off. These are dynamic microphones, mm -hmm. and specifically for those that want model numbers, it's the Heil uh, 22UT. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we, uh, you know, we use the dynamic microphones because this type of thing and, uh, you know, dynamic microphones are probably great if you're gaming too. It really helps uh, get rid of all that outside noise. So if you have a dog or small children in the house or traffic or parents yelling at you, this is what you want. You want a dynamic yeah. microphone. Yeah. And we have noisy equipment on the other side of the room. You guys can probably hardly hear it at all. I mean, there's fans running, there's clicking of keyboards as our producer goes crazy trying to switch cameras left and right. And <laughs> <laughs> so we want to cut out as much as the room noise as we can. And so these microphones are great. Now, then there's the reason uh, or the issue of connecting this professional microphone, which has a three pin locking connector called XLR to your USB port. How do you do that? Well, you got to go from analog to digital. It's buying yourself an audio interface. Uh, so there's a lot of different ones out there, actually, and they can range anywhere from $50 on up mm -hmm. to $5,000. So you want to sort of invest in something that's not a budget, but at the same time, you don't have to go with $5,000 or $1,000. Um, there's one that's a few hundred dollars by, uh, I think it's the Scarlett 2i2 by focus right that's what i run back at home and it's only a few hundred dollars but it's got two xlr inputs and you can get the cheaper ones like 50 dollars less and you could plug one of these microphones into it you could plug headphones into it it's got usb out to the computer and you're good to go and it's got great quality to it so yes and now dave has gotten a little overly technical here i have um so 
but what do you do if you're a brand new YouTuber? You know, you're a middle schooler, you're a high schooler, you still have a, or, or you still have a day job. You can't afford all this equipment. I mean, do you have to buy this professional level equipment to have good audio on YouTube? Oh, I'm seeing a uh, like Drifter here in the uh, chat. Or is it no? It, yeah, where is it? Somebody said you would need uh, if you're going to be doing voiceover tracks. It was by. Retrocity, Retrocity does... Zone. Hey. Uh, he says, for voiceover tracks, you're going to want a condenser. Well, yes and no. You got some warmth from a condenser microphone, depending on what you're going for. But once again, you've got to have a treated room where it's really quiet. And so most studios have both. And sometimes it just sounds better on a dynamic. It depends on what your subject is and mm -hmm. what they sound like. So try both. But if you're on a budget, I think the best is to start off with a dynamic. Well, but even before you even get into the microphones, if you're a brand new YouTuber, to be honest, there's a lot you can do uh, just with your headset to improve your audio quality. Yes, even before you look into the Yeti, which can be $150, $200, and that's pretty pricey. Yeah. Um, so there are a few budget headphones out here. In fact, we got a chat up here with our good friend, Kestel Caden. You know him. Yay, Kestel! And he said earlier that, uh, you know, there was some some headsets that he was recommending the plantronics 780 it's about 70 dollars, and that has a usb connection which runs to your computer and mm -hmm. so that's going to be a good quality headset even better than some in the same price range so you guys may want to look into that and may have them on in the future to talk a little bit more about some of the usb headsets out there mm -hmm. yeah the other thing too is that um if you're like a, a vlogger or you're doing uh Filming not next to your computer, or you don't have a way to bring a mixer and everything with you. Um, you know, how do you know when it's okay to use your smartphone's microphone? When do you need to be using a camera? I mean, how do how do you tell? I generally go by how how important is the audio and the production going to be? If you're going to be filming something, that's going to be a a paid type video, you, you're doing something for a client that is giving you money, you want the best of the best audio. You don't want to be showing up, film their house for a, a real estate video with your iPhone, right? No. But then on the other hand, what if you're making a vlog and you're just doing it for fun and you just want to get your thoughts out there? Yeah, for that, it's absolutely okay to use your uh, smartphone. Although if you're going to be somewhere where there's a lot of background noise, use a headset. Yeah, some you of these know? smartphones do cut out a lot of the background noise, even for a vlog. But if you can't really hear them on that vlog because their microphone is picking up a lot of wind noise or something, you can, you can plug in external devices for not too bad that'll pick up just your voice or what you're pointing that microphone at much, much better. Yeah. You know, and one of the big things with uh, audio is going to be, you know, no matter what equipment you use, it's going to be knowing how to do the post-production. And that's after you film, uh, knowing how to adjust the audio so that it is uh, at an appropriate level on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, most of your editing programs out there do have meters. You'll see like negative 12, negative 6, 0 dB, which is a range that you'll want to sort of get comfortable with and learn what it means. But in the overall basic sense, you want to try to match that from video to video to video. So what I do is I usually mix it to around negative 6 so your peaks are averaging about that. If you go too high, you'll notice this on YouTube channels and jenna i'm sure you know oh yeah some of the channel trailers you'll blast your eardrums <laughs> out whereas some you probably can't hear at all so you guys want to really think about your ending audio level because you don't want to annoy your audience do you no and you know a really good rule of thumb is um you know if you're watching like netflix videos or hulu videos or whatever videos um you want it, your YouTube videos to be around the same audio level. If you have to crank up your volume to hear yourself, you're too quiet. If you have to turn down your volume, you're too loud. You know, that's a basic rule of thumb. The other thing you can do is you really need to test your audio both on headphones and on speakers. Yes. Speakers have some different characteristics. Maybe they add a little bit more bass towards your headphones. Uh, I generally suggest people do that, but overall, once you learn what your headphones sound like and you're comfortable mixing audio and how things sound on them, like how much bass is in this or if I have to sort of EQ that out with some effects and such, um, well then stick with that as your main trusted source for listening to your audio tracks. Yeah. And I see here in the chat, we've got, we have a lot of activity going on. Uh, if you guys are watching, check out the chat. We have a lot of people giving suggestions back and forth. And I see that um, 
we're talking a little bit now about post-production. Somebody mentioned Audacity. And yes. Audacity is one of the main um, softwares that we see used for audio on YouTube. Yeah, and the reason why is because it's absolutely free. You can go and search Audacity. And it, it's actually a very nice program. It's a basic program, but for what it does for free, you can't get by using mm -hmm. this. And it, it's a fantastic start. I've used it in the past. But as you grow, you will actually look into some of the features of other programs and learn what compressors and limiters and EQs do and how these programs operate to better help you sculpt your ending sound profile. Mm -hmm. So you'll want to look into Audacity first or some free program out there, but don't just go and invest in something that's overly complicated that you can't figure out because if you can't figure out the program, well, you're not going to be able to get a great sound out of it. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people seem to think that the Adobe Suite is the be-all, end-all of software in terms of... I don't know, I guess quality, but it is not necessarily very intuitive. So unless you have the time to invest in learning it, it's probably not worth investing in. Yeah, yeah. But then you think about it though, Adobe, if you have their Creative Cloud, I mean, you get the package. So mm -hmm. if you're paying the $30 a month, you got the programs, but then again, it's $30 a month. So maybe some people aren't invested in that yet. Well, it depends. Like I, I use Creative Pro Cloud. I think I use Photoshop and Illustrator and After Effects and Audition and Premiere and a couple others I can't even think of the names of. So, I mean, for my family, it makes sense because my husband also uses all of them. But, um, you know, if you're really going to just be using one program, you know, they have packages for that. But before you get it, go watch some YouTube videos on it because they can be kind of complex programs. And to be honest, unless you're doing a lot of audio mixing, if you're just gaming or you're just vlogging or you're making basic videos, you don't need it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Justin... Just, just Uwan? Uwan in the chat room just said, what is the best recorder video? I'm assuming what, what is the best recorder for video or something. So there, there are a few programs. Once again, Audacity does this. If you have screen capture software like Camtasia, it's about a $300 piece of software, a little bit pricey for some. That records audio quite nicely and allows you to edit it as well. Uh, then, of course, away from software, there's hardware. So things like the ever-popular Zoom H4n that people constantly google search for it and probably find one of my videos on the top ranked search of youtube maybe somewhere can we say self-promotion here <laughs> no not at all <laughs> so but yeah these are standalone hardware uh recorders where you can plug in xlr microphones like the one we're using here on set yeah and record them directly and it just puts it on an sd card which you can put into a computer later and sort of work with uh, from there but they're fantastic so if you're out in the field like at doing a house or something you're filming a house and you want to get the ambience of a room or maybe you're out in the field trying to record a lake and you just want really good recording of the ambience out there that would be a fantastic thing because I don't, I don't know about you but i don't want to record by uh, dragging my desktop out in the middle of a lake no no but i mean that also you know something that comes up is that technology has advanced so much i have a little point and shoot camera um, and you guys all out there are like, it's not a DSLR. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, sorry. I have a little point and shoot camera. I've got kids. I can't always be dragging out the DSLR. But the audio quality on this thing is pretty fantastic for videos. Yeah. Um, I've done some um, vlogging videos with it, not plugging in any external microphones. And, you know, it hasn't picked up excess um, background noise despite there being barking dogs in the next room. You know, I've taken it outside even on windy days you can you know hear a lot same thing with my uh, smartphone and now I happen to have an iPhone 6 plus and uh, that one I find the microphones fantastic but I got the flagship killer one plus one so I'm better <laughs> yeah my husband also got that supposedly flagship killer it and broke. it doesn't actually work as a phone for him so he got a defect Apple <laughs> We want to know, guys, comment below which phone you like. What what products you've actually used in the past to create vlogs and what style of videos you're making. We want to hear your feedback on that. FF Split, which uh, Wolf Lord just said. Yeah, that's a great uh, broadcast-type multicam switcher along with OBS that we've used in the past to do s similar streams like this. Uh, but, yeah, it does record and things like mm -hmm. that. And we have a question here from Shadow Yoshi Fan, who is one of our regulars. Thanks for joining us again. And he asks, what's the difference between Nintendo 3DS and built-in microphones? One is a game console. The other <laughs> one is a microphone. 
I don't know how to answer that. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how else to answer something like that. Sorry, but that was hilarious. Thank you, Yoshi. Thank you. You know, something else uh, that I guess we could talk about, too, would be, um, you know, how we're self-monitoring and stuff when you're doing audio. Should we go into the advanced stuff, guys? I think you'd want to see the advanced stuff. I do. do I love to? advanced. Do you, I mean, do you guys want to see our setup? You know, even I if don't you don't, know. we're going to show you it because we love showing off. And <laughs> the guys did a fancy schmancy time-lapse video. Yes. Um, so, obviously, our setup, we mentioned it's, uh, we think it's about two thousand dollars of equipment anyway wires everywhere well this, especially when set up at first <laughs> and this drives me nuts because the studio is actually it's in my basement and there are wires everywhere it's like a bowl of spaghetti and every time you need a wire you're having to untangle it from everything so i finally went online um and spent actually not that much money i got a bunch of uh, low cost uh wire organizing solutions and we'll post some links in the description um after this uh and so this is a time lapse of dave and our producer my husband jay uh organizing all the cables that were running from our absolutely insane setup roll that so video let's roll that i haven't seen it yet i'm interested our producer says hold on one second you know Ooh, okay <laughs> build the anticipation come on guys anticipation oh here okay. Ooh, fancy look how fast i work this is awesome <laughs> this is fantastic you can see all the wires that we removed there it was just a pile of spaghetti at first then we put down these self-adhesive sticky clamps that you could just close up and yep. then we start running these wires through those channels trying to keep them towards the back of the desk you can sort of see that going in right now if you keep everything in one line, trying to keep audio away from your power lines, that way you don't get any excess hum and interference, you generally work out to be in a better position. And you'll see at a pause there at the end, I mean, that's pretty much the end result, is it looks pretty darn good. Um, so it's a lot more organized. The cables are all labeled on each mm -hmm. side to where they would plug into the multiple connections at the uh, back yes. of our nice lit up mixer. And one tip that I learned from Dave is don't label your cables necessarily the same thing. <laughs> Hang on. It's like, Dave, why don't we go to you, Dave? Hi. Well, yeah, so don't label your cables the same thing. Uh, the way that I recommend that you label your cables. Sorry, we have people walking through the set. It's a live set. you got to deal with that. <laughs> is sorry, that you've got guys. to uh, label things where they plug in. So the back of our board has like a million connections. Label them to what they plug into. So if you've got microphone one, label it mic one. But on this side, that mic one runs to Dave's mic. So we've labeled it Dave's mic. And it's not too expensive to get these microphones or anything like that. So <laughs> falling down <laughs> we have a uh, we have a child wandering around his ipad froze up on him apple apple much <laughs> one plus <laughs> okay so um yeah and the actual the actual products i bought like these little sticky clips it was yeah. like three dollars for six of them yeah, so organizing things isn't expensive at all, and it really, yeah. really helps your workflow, especially when you have to track down a cable. Oh, yeah. If something gets unplugged, you know exactly where it's going to go. You don't have to keep pulling on this cable and be like, where does this thing go? Oh, it goes like 400 different places, and then right next to the thing that you plugged it out from. So The other thing is to, you know, when you buy cables, buy the right length. Yes, or if you're advanced enough and you want to, build your own cables. A lot of people do that. I don't want to do that. You can build cables? You can build cables, but that's for a different show entirely. Yes, I think so. But, yeah, you know, if you've you know, if you got a four-foot run, don't be running a 25-foot cable. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, you, you know, <laughs> not only is it, you know, more disorganized, but you're actually going to be losing quality along that length. Yeah, definitely. If you have uh, – it's another subject for an advanced subject, another show – Balanced versus unbalanced cables. Basically, the unbalanced cables, you can do short runs, but after a while, you're going to get interference, and you're going to get hiss and noise in your audio, and it's just not a good thing. So you want to keep power lines away from your audio lines, and you want to keep short runs if possible. Mm -hmm. So think about that when plugging things in. Uh, but we hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse. It was oh, very man. tasteful. And now I see all these comments about how Apple is so bad. Uh, Sally is saying something about privacy hacks and leaked cloud and... 
<clears throat> you know, that it, is a it, five-year-old watching movies on Netflix. So <laughs> I, I, I think we're okay here. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to privacy, don't worry about it, guys. I mean, There's it's no probably such thing. Say. There's no such thing when you're online. If you're using a credit card, if you're out in public, I mean, privacy is dead. In fact, there's a whole video series, like an hour or two, Privacy is Dead. I think you guys can YouTube fantastic series on, on what information people can find from just using various different things. Um, All right, so we've got a, another question from Shadow Yoshi Fan asking what we recommend for recording plush videos. I don't know what a plush video is. Yoshi, you want to explain what a plush video is? Is that like a video of stuffed animals? I don't know. (laughs) Sorry, you're testing the limits of our knowledge. (laughs) I I don't know where to go with this. I've never heard this term before. Well, Uh, all right. I really want to know now. I'm really curious. Like, I'm halfway tempted to just open Google while on the live show. And okay, that would be bad form, though. It would. It so would. we'll just sit here in silence and so wait. So can one of you guys please Google it and tell us? <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure the 30-second delay won't be an issue. <laughs> <laughs> That's another so, thing that you, you come across with these live streams in general is there's a 30-second delay. So if we say something, you guys probably don't hear it for 30 or plus seconds. Um, and then you reply back, and it's another 30-plus seconds to when we see it. So, yeah. Epic Man agrees with us. It's a video, it's a video with stuffed, stuffed toys. toys. I then in that case, I mean, your smartphone is 1080p or 4K if you got mm-hmm. some of these now. Uh, you got slow motion with high frame rate, so you can do some really interesting things. And the audio on it, well, it's generally really darn good for the most part. Well, and and you could, you know, mic wise, you don't really have to worry because stuffed animals generally don't make too much noise. Yeah, that's unless your your duck is quacking in a stuffed video or something. All right, so. All right, so here's a really good question about uh, from Platinum Fire MC. He wants to know if uh, we should get a pop filter for your mic. We generally do. Um, we have pop filters. Uh, th- there's two different types of pop filters and windscreens, actually. Uh, the windscreens are the little foam ones that you may see on the show every now and then, the black ones that fit over the microphone. Mm-hmm. And those are called windscreens. Now, sometimes they do stop popping, which is caused by plosives when you say uh, a syllabus like uh The letter P, so when you pop your P's like that, you get that rush of air, and people just hate that. And it really does sound annoying. Now, on our system, we use compressors and such and roll off the EQ, so you don't hear that a lot. Another great tip to get rid of that is back off the microphone a little bit. You don't want to be right up next against this microphone, uh, but you want to be like six inches away, and you really kill that noise a little bit more. Uh, So the windscreens do cut down on that a little bit, but if you don't want to run a windscreen, you want to sort of keep the same quality of sound, uh, there's a a foam or mesh um, or a metal or mesh one that is usually flat in a disc shape that fits and stays a few inches away from the microphone. That instantly stops a lot of air too. So that's uh, that's specifically a uh, pop filter. So two different things, windscreen great for outdoors or if there's a, a breeze somewhere by a fan, you want to run a foam windscreen or if you're in a studio and you just want to stop plosives, the pop filter. And so Shadow Yoshi's coming back and asking about voice acting. That is a great question. Um, we actually end up doing quite a bit of voiceover work. Um, yeah. I can't think specifically on what now, but we usually just set up a regular microphone with a pop filter. Uh, we have, uh, we can run it directly into the mixer. You can run it directly into the computer. Basically, whatever, whatever works, whatever sounds good. So it's going to be, you know, just depending on what you're doing. And so also we have, so Dave, Epic yes. Man lives. I'm guessing that's lives, not lives. Maybe it's lives. Epic Man wants to know about the Snowball microphone, if it's any good. Yeah, I have seen the Snowball mic. I haven't worked with one personally, uh, but I have seen a lot of people review them, comment on them, and it seems like the people that are just starting out that think that they're decent microphones or they're really good, some people seem to get them into a position where they work out really well. So I guess they can be good. But then you get the people that really sort of understand audio a little bit more. Maybe they've advanced their hearing to understand what is good audio, what am I listening for, and then they grow out of these cheaper microphones that just really can't get the best of the best sound. So, And and that's, once again, a condenser microphone. So if you have a gaming keyboard that clicks really loudly, you're going to get that in the noise. Um, And yes, you can do post-processing with noise gates and such to remove some of that, but you're going to kill, anytime you do some sort of processing, you have the chance of 
killing the sound and results. So should we talk? Because Epic Man, it looks like he's looking for a new mic. Can we uh, talk about the mics we're using real quick? Yeah. So we mentioned this earlier. These are dynamic microphones with a professional XLR output. They run to XLR based equipment. Like Mm -hmm. in our case, we got PreSonus Studio Live, which has multiple lights that you could stare at all day and it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty pretty. Like we don't have to set up a Christmas tree this year. <laughs> <laughs> Just take your photo for for the holidays in front of the mixing console. Yeah, well all the presents will be underneath the mixer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so these microphones, once again the Heil PR twenty two UT. You can get the twenty UT as well. The UT stands for utility, it's a little bit lower cost. Mm-hmm. Uh generally starting around a hundred dollars, ninety dollars. They're they're really good microphones. Another one that's really, really well known is the Shure SM58. Uh, it's pretty much the industry standard for vocal work and all that, and they're, they're pretty much indestructible. You guys can look at videos of people trying to kill these by microwaving them and nailing nails into wood, and they they just last forever. <laughs> I don't recommend you nail nails into wood with your microphone. Can we microwave these? No, I would don't don't microwave. Oh man, too expensive. How about your Chromebook? Can we microwave your Chromebook? Yeah. Well, that's more suited for throwing out windows if you see the Chromebook video. Well, yeah, but you have to open the window first because otherwise it'll just bounce off the glass. And then the angry uh, baker will come after you. <laughs> so, yeah. So. Uh, Plantronics is one of the uh, – is Plantronics what you have in the pictures? No, we have Heil uh, sound microphones here. Uh, Plantronics does a lot of uh, headset-based microphones. I think they do uh, – uh, on stage mics and stuff like this uh but yeah kestel recommended before a microphone i forget what it was you guys could probably post in the comments unless i find it first here in our chat the plantronics uh 780 yeah that's what he recommended about mm-hmm. 70 dollars. i think that's a good start and it's also great for people that don't want this mic boom in the way they don't want to invest yeah. in a mic stand that could be 20 30 dollars uh and so if you're new to talking to a microphone you sort of have to understand that if you turn away from this you're really going to cut out the audio so you got to think about where you're looking at and Mm -hmm. so that's why sometimes it looks that's why sometimes it looks like we're looking in odd directions because um yeah microphone Microphone. so for those that are new and they don't really want to think about that yet get a headset because the microphone is right there on your face also think about the microphone position for those little booms on those usb headsets because if you have them right under your nose or in front of your mouth you get plosives you're gonna get breathing noise sometimes right above your nose or below the chin tends to work just experiment with it Mm -hmm. it's different for every microphone out there well an, an interesting tip i don't know if you guys are aware but um I've learned that when you're doing like a one of those uh, condenser mics off of a camera, you don't actually want to aim it at the person's face. Yes. Also, I know um, Phonic uh, Phonic here in the chat is saying, "What are your thoughts on Rode microphones that want to for those that want to invest heavily in audio, like uh, for on stage and stuff or out in the field? You'll see a lot of people use uh, what's known as a shotgun microphone. It's a really highly directional microphone, so you can get it far away, but if you aim the barrel at somebody, it's going to pick up mostly what you're aiming at. So uh, Rode makes the NTG2 and NTG3, which are anywhere from a few hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. So that's something to look into. And those are pretty much the standard for shotgun microphones for for stuff like filming and production out on field. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you also got things like the wireless lo- uh, lapel mics and such oh, man, for six hundred dollars. But they just they sound really good because they're really close to your source, mm-hmm. and they can really well be hidden too. We use them a lot here on set. Yes. So. So you'll notice, like a lot of the uh, videos we make, um, you can sometimes see it clipped on. Yeah. Um, the lapel mics you can you can get really cheap ones they're not as good quality but you know just to try them out see if they work for what you're doing yeah i mean i had a plantronics one that i reviewed in the past it was decent but they're a little bit bulkier so they're harder to hide sometimes they're directional as well so you can't twist them to the side and hide them beneath clothing and you'll get rustling noise it's better usually if you're going for something like that try to invest in something that's a little bit more higher budget range because you're gonna be happier with it in the end rather than spending double or triple on lower end which really adds up so Think about that as well. Uh, a good headset and a good mic for the Razer, the Razer, Razer Kraken Pro. 
I'm not familiar with that one, but uh, thank you, Dragon TV. <laughs> it's uh, someone's talking about having a shotgun mic and pointing it directly at themselves. If you get a shotgun mic, you generally want to be pointing it towards the sternum yeah. right here. Uh, if you're pointing it at the head, you're going to be picking up all highs, uh, no mids or lows. So, Why do built-in microphone lag from Yoshi One? I don't know that. What's it built oh, into? Built-in microphones lag. Um some microphones actually do have lag. It depends on the camera and the software that they run, the firmware. Uh, they generally shouldn't, but uh, if, you, if you're getting lag, I don't know, contact the manufacturer and see if that's an issue. It shouldn't be, though. Uh, for stuff that's streaming, though, like our, our setup here, we actually intentionally delay the audio when we have a guest on yeah. because going through all the switching software that we have actually delays the video enough. <laughs> so we have to put a 300 millisecond <laughs> delay on the audio for the 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 audio to sync up with their video when it gets to you guys you know it's yeah. our first few episodes we didn't do that yeah <laughs> this i mean this live show it is a work in progress every week we're learning and we're doing more for instance today you see um kestel bouncing around in the uh in the chat room but he he also was messaging us letting us know that our audio was okay and all that yeah uh you know it's just uh man you just gotta learn and go with it and of yeah. course we had the child wander through the set <laughs> it happens but yeah guys so we hope that all this information really helps you out of course you can go and research on our youtube channel for more tips on microphone suggestions we've did it in the youtube tip series in the past where i've produced a few videos on that and we're always coming out with more suggestions on video so if you guys have any thoughts or comments go to the front page of socialblade.com and all the way at the bottom of that green support button it sends a message to me so I'll be happy to answer your questions, but we're also looking for comments and feedback on what you guys want as well. And Jenna here, you do the consulting, so if you I guys do. want some help on your YouTube channel, mm -hmm. go contact well, Jenna. Yeah, you can, uh, you know, I do consulting. I do help with YouTube channels, but I do know about other social media sites as well. So um, it does need to be related to your YouTube channel, but, um, you know, in terms of integrating with other social media to get more... Um, to get more leads and get more views and all that i would be happy to help out just go ahead to go to our booking widget book that initial consultation and there's I those dogs look forward to hearing from you <laughs> anyway guys that's gonna wrap up another live show because we got dogs we got children we got it's it's one of those weeks <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed the show i'll see you next week bye